the symbolism of mountains and hills. Cones, hills and mountains. Our ancestors believed that every entity, visible or not, could be represented by a cone. As some hills and mountains are cone-shaped, they can be used as a symbol for an entity or being. The size of the cone, the hill or mountain, then symbolically indicates how powerful that being is. The larger the cone, hill or mountain, the more powerful the entity. The smaller hills then represent minor deities. The Intelligence Hierarchy Ancient and mystic man believe not in one exclusively male god, but a great hierarchy of intelligences, gods. Different intelligences created different things, thus creation was essentially a team effort. Furthermore, it was not believed to be an exclusively masculine pursuit. Every male intelligence had a female intelligence to help. Multiple mothers and fathers. The symbolic father intelligence had the idea and the mother intelligence nurtured it into existence as a visible form. The great mother was venerated far more than the father because the father with all his ideas was remote and unknowable, whereas the mother had created life on earth. The biblical religions destroyed this harmony and created a realm of only one male god. Even Greece celebrated Zeus and Hera. Hills and mountains as intelligences. Wherever one finds cone-shaped hills and mountains, the ancients dedicated these to an intelligence and made it sacred. Twin peaks were even more sacred as they could represent a father and a mother intelligence together. The size determined which intelligence that mountain would represent. Very, very powerful intelligences were represented by massive mountains. Lesser deities were represented by smaller mountains and minor gods were represented by hills. In areas where there were no mountains or hills, the people made them. Pyramids and ziggurats, barely hills and modified natural hills were all constructed. Glastonbury Tor, for example, is natural, but has been adapted. Silber Hill in the UK, however, is entirely man-made. It is the largest artificial prehistoric mound in Europe. Built over a short period between about 2470 and 2350 BC, it compares in height and volume to the roughly contemporary Egyptian pyramids. Their size indicates that thousands of people were involved in their construction. And this happened all over the world, indicating that this symbol system was universal. The sun, the moon, the planets and the stars. The sun, father and moon, mother, along with the stars and their constellations, were chosen to represent the intelligences. So, to reinforce the symbolism, our ancestors created a landscape, sometimes using existing natural landscape features that mapped the sky map onto our planet mapping heaven unto earth. As above, so below. Cup and ring marks help people find these sacred sites. Because people could neither read or write, the symbols represented sites 
dedicated to planets and constellations. The cups were then inverted hills or mountains. And this is the 5,000-year-old Koshno Stone in Scotland. Mountains, hills and the cosmic egg. A cone from the side looks like a hill or mountain, but in flound form it looks like an egg, a cosmic egg. Thus the choice of hill or mountain was often dependent on how closely the other symbolic level and layers mapped. Was there actual water flowing around the mountain to match the symbolic water? Were the surroundings a bowl, making it look like it was in an egg? When men undertook to create their own mountain, they made their own water using diverted rivers, moats and ditches, locks or the sea. And they used high, circular raised banks to create the impression of an egg wall. The work involved was extraordinary and showed not slavery or forced labour, but absolute faith in the belief system and its divine nature. Jerusalem, and did those feet in ancient time, by William Blake. And did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green? And was the Holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen? And did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? And was Jerusalem builded here among those dark satanic mills? Bring me my bow of burning gold, bring me my arrows of desire, bring me my spear, O clouds unfold, bring me my chariot of fire. I will not cease from mental fight nor shall my sword sleep in my hand, till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. Mm -hmm.